we're going to talk about flight anxiety. If you guys are new here, I make videos about traveling and living well with anxiety, and I've also made a ton of videos about living in China. I deal with anxiety and I also love to travel, so I kind of get where a lot of people are coming from when it comes to flight anxiety. First of all, I want you guys to realize that the fear of flying is extremely common. And similar to general anxiety, flight anxiety can actually develop later in life. So some people who start out loving flying will end up fearing flying. And if we don't address the fear, it can grow and grow and grow and get worse as we age. I think a lot of the fear surrounding flying comes from the lack of control. You're putting your life in someone else's hands. And I think the idea of death is very strong when it comes to flight anxiety because everyone has experienced a little bit of turbulence and everyone has seen plane crashes in movies or on TV and so that lack of control when you get in a plane can be a lot different than when you just get in a car with someone else driving. So I want to start with the stuff that works for me because I deal with anxiety when it comes to literally everything. So even though I don't specifically have a fear of flying, I definitely have feared flying in the past. Like I've had moments on planes where I think too much, you know, and I just start to get freaked out. I've had flights where I get on and I'm like, for some reason I'm just really fearful right now and I don't know why. So here's the things that work best for me when I start to feel really scared. The number one argument for myself to not be afraid of flying is the idea of letting the love of travel outweigh the fear of flying. I can't get to this destination that I really, really want to go to unless I fly. So what am I going to choose? My love of travel, my love of the idea of going to this destination, or the fear of being in the plane and the act of getting there. The reason I got this tattoo the reason I started this channel, my blog, any of this is because I kept choosing love over fear and I saw my life improving so, so much. And so for me, I just remind myself, I look at my tattoo, I think, do I want to choose love or fear in this situation? I want to choose love. So I try to envision the destination that I'm going to and feel the gratitude come in as I breathe. So I'll just breathe and I'll think about the awesome things I'm going to see and how much I've been wanting to go to this place or just like one fun thing that I'm excited to do there or if it's the flight home, I'll think, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful I got to do that. Even if the flight is scaring me, like it doesn't even matter because the gratitude that I'm feeling for the ability to even go to a place that I really want to see is just outweighing that fear. If there's somewhere you really desperately want to travel to and you're terrified to fly there, that fear of flying is the hurdle that you have to jump in order to get to your destination. So of course facing your fears is very scary. Like that's just the nature of it. But I swear like 90% of it is actually just getting yourself to go through the motions and do it. As soon as you get on the flight, as soon as it takes off, you are there, you're, you're good. I also am really comforted when I think about the facts and statistics surrounding flights. So your chances of dying in a plane crash are somewhere between one in 11 million and one in 60 million. I don't know where they get these stats from, but these are the two numbers I've heard. It's obviously a huge difference, 11 million to 60 million. And I will put a graph up on the screen right now that kind of demonstrates to you how safe it is to fly. You are more likely to get struck by lightning. Another straight up fact is that a lot of movies and a lot of media likes to feature plane crashes as a way to dramatize the scene. It's very sensational. It sparks emotions in people and that's good for movies, good for television. So it gets featured a lot. Also, any travel related accidents definitely get played up in the media. They get sensationalized. And the reason for that is because if you saw an article titled 100,000 planes landed safely around the globe today, you would not click on it because that sounds extremely boring. Even though that is the reality, it's just a little boring, <laughs> which is comforting to me. So try your best to stay away from the sensationalized media surrounding plane crashes. It doesn't serve you. So do your best to avoid it or just not give any like emotion to it. Try to distance yourself from it or disconnect yourself from it. The number one thing I personally do on a flight, if I feel kind of panicked, I look at the flight attendants. If I look at the flight attendants and they don't look scared, I realize that I shouldn't be scared either. They are so well trained in emergency situations. They do this as their job. They fly like on ridiculous numbers of flights every single year. This is this is what their work is. They just show up, they get on a plane and it's not that big of a deal to them. And there's a reason it's not a big deal because it's very safe. So turbulence does freak me out and that's usually when I end up feeling like, okay, I'm gonna panic right now and then I'll look at the flight attendant. They don't look worried. Okay, cool, I'm gonna calm down now. The thing with turbulence is that it's just air. It's just air changes. Obviously air can be very damaging, but think about it like this. If you're in a car and you go over some bumps, you don't feel like you're gonna die. <laughs> 
When you're in a plane and you go over some bumps, sometimes you can feel like you're gonna die. But it's really essentially the same idea. You're going over some kind of thing that's making the vehicle that you're in jostle around, but it's designed to deal with that stuff and it will pass and you will be fine. If the facts and statistics are really making you feel good but you're not quite there, one tip I heard online was to take a course about flying, about like modern day air travel. Because I've heard from people that it helps you to understand why flying is so safe. These planes are pretty much designed to fly themselves. They can handle a ridiculous amount of natural occurrences in our atmosphere. So even though thinking about the facts and statistics and all that works really well for me, I totally understand that sometimes when it comes to a real true phobia, it's completely illogical. It's disconnected from reality. So sometimes it can be difficult or even impossible to reconcile your fear with safety statistics. So that's why I have eight more tips for you. Number one, communicate to other people so that they take you seriously. Oftentimes when we travel, we're traveling with a friend or a family member, and a lot of times when someone starts to get freaked out, it's really easy to tease them. I actually used to tease my little brother all the time. He's terrified of flying. He'll, he'll hopefully never watch this video and find out I said this, but he's really terrified of flying. And he's a very smart guy. Like It doesn't make any sense why he would be afraid. So I used to tease him a lot about it until I realized that it was a real genuine phobia and I stopped teasing him. If he had told me with all seriousness, please stop, I'm actually scared, you're making it worse, I probably would have listened. Probably. He's my little brother, so it's hard to say. But basically, if you communicate with someone and let them know that this is a genuine fear, like this is something that is really debilitating to you and you're not joking around, they may switch from being a bully and teasing you to being your ally. They can help you in that situation. But if your friends and family know you as a pretty fearless person or they don't associate you with a ton of anxiety, they might not realize that you need an ally. So just communicate. Number two, this is a big one and probably the biggest time commitment out of everything I'm mentioning, but it can help you in so many aspects of life and I'm gonna make a video all about this later on because I used to just be like, yeah, whatever, that's what everyone says to do. It doesn't work for me, I'm just not good at it. And I had a total 180 shift. Did you see a squirrel? And that is meditation. <laughs> Practicing meditation out of flight can help you in flight. If you can get yourself centered and distanced from your own emotions, you will have a much easier time dealing with emotions as they come up when you're freaked out on a plane. So if you can practice meditation every day leading up to your flight, you might be a lot better off on your flight. And like I said, I'm gonna make a whole video about this later on and let you guys know why I had a total 180 shift and why I actually believe in meditation now. Number three, this is the easiest one to do and probably the most effective for me. Distractions. Distractions are awesome. Download a new game on your phone. Buy a new book at the airport. Download some new movies before you go. Distractions are really, really nice, especially on longer flights. And I'm actually going to be making a video all about surviving a long haul flight. That'll be going up next week. And I'll talk a little bit more about the things that I downloaded that really helped me in flight and were super, super distracting. Read the weird little magazine in the back of the seat in front of you. Sometimes I do the crossword puzzles in there. I don't really like crosswords, but they're very distracting. And sometimes if there's a food menu, I'll just read the whole thing just for fun. Number four, create a mantra for yourself or create a couple mantras. I'm actually going to put a link down below to a blog post that was written by a woman. I don't know her, but I found it online and I thought it was really, really good advice. She used to deal with debilitating flight anxiety and she created these mantras for herself for pre-flight, in-flight, and after the flight. She claims that they completely cured her flight anxiety. So if it works for you, that's awesome. If it's too hippy dippy for you, I've got more suggestions. If you're unfamiliar with mantras, essentially you just create a phrase and it's a phrase that you repeat to yourself over and over and over because studies have shown that if you repeat phrases like this to yourself, your brain will eventually start to believe it. And then instead of being on the flight and your brain telling you time to freak out, your brain might tell you, I'm so grateful to be able to participate in air travel. Something like that. I don't know. Go look at the mantras she wrote. They're much better than anything I could come up with. Also, if you have a mantra that you have used and it works for you when it comes to flight anxiety or really any tips, definitely comment down below. I'd love to get some conversations going that help out other people. That's the whole point of this video. Anyways, number five, talk to your doctor about anxiety medication. <laughs> I have a handful of close friends and family who deal with very little mental health stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. They've never considered going on any kind of like 
permanent medication, but when it comes to a flight, they go to their doctor and they're like, give me the drugs, I, anything that will get me through this flight, I'm down with. And they've seen great successes with it. So there are things like Xanax and I think like Dramamine and I don't know, I don't, I'm not a doctor. But anyways, doctors might have suggestions for you if your fear of flying is just so, so, so strong that the mantras aren't doing anything, the distractions aren't doing anything, you're just white knuckling the like armrests and you just can't do it anxiety medicine might be the best route for you. But yeah, up to you, it's not for everybody, whatever. Number six, and this one's kind of odd, but it's really worked for me. Give yourself permission to be afraid and welcome your anxiety in like an old friend. Maybe not a friend that you wanna be best friends with, but a friend that's been around nonetheless. I find that sometimes when my anxiety is really strong, all I think about is the anxiety itself. I'm not really addressing the particular issues that I'm freaked out about. I'm really just thinking, why do I have anxiety? I hate anxiety. My brain is broken. I don't like this. And I'm doing the circular motion because it's just this horrible circular thought that doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything for me. But I found that there have been a few times where I'm like, you know what, anxiety? Bring it on. I dare you to freak me out. Just try. Come on, anxiety, sit down next to me. Like, you just think about it like another person that is just there with you. It kind of helps me to let go of the fact that the anxiety is there and just start moving on to the real part of the issue. I'll leave a blog post down below called Coping with Travel Anxiety. I wrote it a long time ago and I go into a little bit more detail on this idea in that blog post. Number seven, eat plain foods. I know this is really odd, but the digestive system is actually really affected by anxiety and I've heard from a lot of people who have anxiety that they also deal with digestive problems. So for me, I found that avoiding any kind of like fried food, red meat, anything really heavy, rich in dairy, really fatty. If I avoid that stuff before a flight and when I'm on a flight, sometimes it helps my anxiety a lot because I don't get as many of those like stomach cramps that make me feel like I just want to hunch over and like just do nothing and I'm like so broken. <laughs> so yeah, eating plain foods and choosing plain foods can help a lot. Even sometimes that for me, that'll mean paying extra and then I'll go pay like $8 for a freaking bag of like trail mix. And you know what? It's worth it. It's worth $8 for a bag trail mix rather than eight dollars for a sandwich because that sandwich isn't gonna make me feel very good the nuts might make me feel better so I find like nuts dried fruit rice vegetables that stuff tends to help me out so figure out what foods feel better in your stomach and try to stick to just those when you're traveling and the last tip for you number eight is the four seven eight breathing method and I actually just learned about this recently so the whole idea it's really easy you breathe in for four counts hold the breath for seven counts and as you're breathing out, you make it last a whole eight counts. When I say counts, I really just mean seconds. And it's actually extremely calming. That was recommended to me to do when I'm in doctor's offices because I'm really anxious about going to the doctor. And when I got my blood drawn, I tried it and it was, it was really nice actually. It kind of tricks your brain into being a little bit calmer. So it's really nice, give it a shot. My last thing to tell you is that I don't know you, but I believe in you and some of you I do know. Seriously, you got this. I was so nervous about traveling anywhere at all and I have been exploring the globe for the last few years. I just tried to like do as much as I could without taking fear into consideration when it came to making my decisions. And I, I've done so many more things that I really truly love doing since I started doing that, like traveling. If you wanna check out any of my travel vlogs, I do talk a lot more about traveling with anxiety and living abroad and going on planes and you know traveling solo with anxiety, all that stuff. I'll have a bunch of video playlists and videos that I think you might like linked down below and up in the iCards. Oh, and of course I have a lot more resources and information on my blog as well, which is laurenwithoutfear.com. So anyways, that's enough self-promotion. I will see you guys in a couple of days. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye.